All right, guys. So um, this little video is to prepare you for the first quiz that we will do on. Oh, sorry, I miss. This is not right. I. I the quiz will be on Thursday, March um, twenty-seven. Okay. So with this is the date that we will have our quiz. That we next this coming Thursday, and we have to understand. With the videos, watching the videos, doing the homeworks, I'll give you some leeway. You can have the whole day or even as long as you sometimes you want. But for the quizzes, we're gonna have to adhere to strict uh, time. So at start time, that means that then I will post the quiz online. Uh, don't forget to refresh your browser because if you have opened it and it's not showing, if you look at it a bit later, it, it doesn't show. You have to refresh again. Okay, so that's the start time, and but more importantly, this is the end time. That means whatever, whenever you start with it, you have to uh, give me, um, a, send me an email with your answer before this time. Otherwise, I will not uh, um, count it. If you have a very, very good reason for why you couldn't do it that quickly, you have to let me know. All right. If there's something that all of a sudden happened that you that problems with it, let me know as soon as possible. But we're gonna try to adhere to these rules, okay? And so via email, remember one five seven in the subject that you get if you click on the links there. It always gives you that. So in subject, let me remind you of this. Um, <clears throat> and. Don't forget, you have signed an honor pledge, and you means that you agree that for this particular quiz and any quiz that will follow, you will only work on it yourself. Nobody else will help you, and also you will not use any uh, online technology or online um, uh, programs that help you solve this. What you can use, and this is different than what we usually have, is you can use your textbook, you can use your notes, you can use my previous videos, you can look at this review video, you can look at the previous review video, but I would strongly suggest you look at these things before the quiz. Don't start preparing yourself for the quiz because you have only have this much time, okay? About two hours, All right? Don't waste your time Make sure that you are prepared for the quiz. Okay, so I repeat, you can use all your notes, all the material that I provide, and of course also your graphing calculator, but you cannot use anybody's help, anybody else's help, <coughs> and you cannot uh, copy uh, answers from an online program, like Wolfram Alpha or something. Don't do that. Uh, and Second important thing, and perhaps even more important, is it's not the answer that matters here. What matters here is the steps you show in order to get this answer. And so follow as closely as, follow, uh, as possible the steps that I will show you now in this one example. And it's for these steps that I'm going to give you points, and not so much for the answer. So if you just write the answer because you somehow figured it out in an illegal way, you won't get points for it anyway. So this is, you have to show your own work here. Okay, so let's do the problem that I have in mind. I want to calculate, so this is how the problem is normally posed. Uh, use Taylor polynomials. And I will often always say the degree of degree two in here. To approximate and then I give you some, some number that has to be calculated, approximated, not calculated, right? The whole point is to do this without calculator. And for instance, let's do the fourth root, fourth root of 2. Okay? You can put it in the calculator if you want to see what it is, but that's not really what this is about. Okay? And estimate the error. So there's two parts. Okay, don't forget to do this estimate the error part. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, step one, let's say the setup. Okay, what is it that we need? Well, we need a function that we're going to write the tail polynomial of. And of course, the function is actually here. I hope everybody sees this, the fourth root of x. 
Now be careful, we're going to have to write as an exponential with a rational exponent. And rational exponent is, this is, the power here is 1 really, okay, and the index is 4. Okay, so this means that uh, we have x to the power 1 over 4. Okay, but we also need an a and we also need a b. b is the one that they have given us. This will be b. b is 2. So the big question is what is a? And remember there are two conditions. We want it to be close to this one. That's one condition, and the other condition is it should be also easy for this function. What does easy mean for this function? It should be a perfect power of force power. But this is very simple now to see, right? I hope everybody sees that the answer here is, well, 1. Okay, so um, let's erase all this and just put in 1. A is 1. Okay, this we need, because in step 2, now we can calculate the Taylor polynomial. And if you insist to do it on a different way, fine with me, but I would strongly, strongly suggest do it the way I have been doing it in class, making this table. We have 2, right, because we want the Taylor polynomial of degree 2, so that's how far we have to go. Here comes the nth derivative of my function. In the next part comes the n derivative evaluated at the center, which is 1 here. And then don't forget there's the last column here, where we actually going to divide by n factorial. Okay, we start with the 0 derivative means just the function itself. So we're talking about this function, x 1 fourth. We take, so remember, each time we go from here to there in this column, we take derivatives. So we take the derivative 1 fourth x to the minus 3 4, the power rule. Subtract one from the exponent, bring the exponent down and subtract one of the exponent. And then we need to do this one more time. So we do the same thing. We have a 1 4, then the new exponent that comes down is minus 3 4, and then subtracting one of these exponents gives minus 7 4. Please do your algebra correctly here. Okay, that's easy. Now, the next column is, is even easier to go from here to there. You're just plugging a equals you put in x equals 1 here, because that's the one that we have. If this is different a, then you put a different value here. But okay, so now we have 1. Now luckily, the, any power of 1 is 1, so we really don't have to think much here. This is 1 to the power 1 fourth, that's just 1. This is 1 fourth times, now here you plug in 1, but it's again a power of 1, so there's nothing there. I'll write times 1 just to show you that where it comes from. And then the next one, the same thing, this power doesn't contribute if I put in 1, so what is left is minus 3 over 4 times 4 is 16. Okay, and then this column we have to divide by n factorial. Now remember that 0 factorial is 1 and 1 factorial is 1, so there's nothing happening in these two col columns, so we just copy 1 and 1 fourth. Of course, 2 factorial is 1 times 2, that's just 2, so we're going to have to divide by 2 here. Minus 3 over 16 divided by 2, so this is actually... 32. This is minus 3 over 32. Okay, so we can write down this Taylor polynomial. What is the Taylor polynomial? Remember, these are powers of x minus a. Okay, and a in this case is 1, so this will be powers of 1, x minus 1. Okay, so here we go. And these, remember, these are then the these guys here are the coefficients of the powers of this of the zero power, this of the first power, and this of the second power. Okay, let's put it all down. So we have 1, the, co the constant, plus 1 fourth, that will be the coefficient of the first power, so x minus 1 to the power 1, which of course you don't write. And then the last one, that's the third degree, degree 2, is minus 3, 32, x minus 1 squared. And this is our total polynomial of degree <coughs> 2. Okay, but of course that's not the end of the question. Step 3, now that we have this Taylor polynomial, we can answer the approximation question. So the cube root of 2 
is approximately the same as P2 of 2. Remember, this was our B here. So now it's that B is plugged in, and only now. A common mistake is to plug in B too soon. Okay, so we do this. We plug in 2 in this polynomial here, so in there. We get 1 plus 1 fourth, 2 minus 1, but just 1, minus 3 over 32. Let me rewrite this. Minus 3 over 32. Again, 2 minus 1 is 1 squared, so there's nothing there. So this is the answer. And you can leave it like this, but it, it helps if you write it as one common fraction, or you can now check what this actually is. But I'm saying this, what, what I need to see is this, not the decimal value. Now, just for our, if I've said for those that like to, to work this out more neatly, let's put this on a common denominator so that we write it as a single fraction. But if you don't need, want to do this, or if you don't mess it up with, by making mistakes here, if this is the answer I want to see. Okay, but let's do this anyway. So common denominator is going to be 32. So 32, we have to put this like 32 times 32 here, right? Here I have to multiply top and bottom with 8. So we get plus 8. And here we have minus 3, all this on 32. So this would be uh, 40 minus 3, 37, 32. Okay. I'm not going to say what the value is yet. Let's move to the error. So step 4. The error. Now the error, remember, is obtained by going one further. So here our n was 2. For the error we need also 3. So I'll do this in a bit different color. I'll try to use colors that you can read. I realize that sometimes I use colors. Okay, so 3. We need the third power, but we only need this part, the derivative. So Again, we're going to do the, the power rule on this one. We have already minus 3 over 16 times, now this coefficient comes down, minus 7 over 4, uh, x to the minus 10 over 4. Okay? This is what we need. Okay? And then remember now, the error is given by, is the error is in the maximum of this function, the function that I just found, so this let me write this out. So this number here is 21 over 16 times 4, that is 64. x to the minus 10 over 4. I have to take absolute values. That means ignore any neg negative sign. There are none, so it's not really important here. And then look for x's that are between a and b. So this a and b here. Now, a is the smallest, so I should put that first, so 1 is less than x, and x is less than 2. This means x between 1 and 2. Okay. There's more. Here comes, in the next part, comes b minus a, so I'll write this, the formula first. So this here would be b minus a to the power 3 over 3 factorial, right? That's the general formula. What is b minus a? Okay, so we know that b minus a is um, uh, 2 minus 1 to the power 3 divided by, and then this last guy, 3 factorial, is just 6, 6. Okay? Of course, 2 minus 1 to the power 3, that's just 1. The, main, the big deal is this, how to find the maximum. And I promise you there are only two ways that you can, that we will use this and that you have to um, use this is either we're dealing with a decreasing or increasing function when you can tell where the maximum is or we're dealing with geometric tri trigonometric functions like sine and cosine where we do very roughly say okay these are never bigger than one and that's the that's what we're going to take as maximum now we are here in the case of a decreasing function if you don't believe me well just plot this function so this is a decreasing function And we know, if you just make a picture, something like that, a decreasing function, if you're in the interval from 1 to 2, the biggest point, the maximum, will be here. So the maximum is uh, at x equals 1 because it is decreasing. Say something like this on your answer. If you don't say this, I, I 
must assume that you somehow don't understand what you're doing. So what does this now mean? It means I can replace x by 1 in here. So let's work it out. So we have that this is now 21 over 64 times 1 to whatever power it is is again 1. We have already a 1 here and then 6. All right, and this is a fraction that we can calculate. Um, we can perhaps even simplify, it doesn't matter. So this is the only answer that I want you to, to give. This is what I need to see. Now we can check what did we actually obtain. So wh where are we with this? What, does this make any sense? So, okay, let's see. Uh, I calculated for you what the values are. So I'm, I'm now using um, green, that is calculator. So from the calculator, but this is something I'm not supposed to use. Notice I didn't do that, right? I did everything in my head. Or if it's simple add addition, so if you're, that's fine. But it's this working out. So this number comes out, if I put it in the calculator, unless I make a mistake, is 1.156. Okay. Now the actual value of this guy, I also calculated that, and I believe, where did that go? Uh, ah, here. It's 1.1. 1892. You see that what this is, we have at least the first digit uh, agree and the second digit is not fully agree. So what to understand, is our error telling us this? Well, this one, I also calculated this particular error here and I found it was something like it was a bit less than 0 0.05. So this tells me you are correct up to the first digit, but you see the the 05 here is, well, the difference between the second digit here is 03, not 05. But th that's what errors, this is an estimate of the error, right? We're giving as bad as possible. Okay, so it all fits together and this is what I need you to do on the quiz on Thursday.